In this video, we solve homework problem 14.2.031 uh, from the Larson and Edwards Calculus Early Transcendental Functions textbook, 7th edition. The problem says, set up and evaluate a double integral to find the volume of the solid bounded by the graphs of the equations z equals x plus y, x squared plus y squared equals 16, um, and it's in the first octant. Um, so uh, basically, we've got to visualize this and then we have to use our visualization to come up with a top function, a bottom function, and a region of integration. So let's briefly review how that works. If we have a solid that lies between two functions, let's say we've got z equals f of x, y here, and maybe z equals uh, g of x, y down here, and we're trying to find the volume between this surface and this surface, and also above some region R in the xy plane, so maybe this is your region R. Um, so you're, you're basically trying to find that volume in between um, this guy and this guy. Um, the way we compute that is using a double integral, or one way to do it is using a double integral. And what we do is we take the double integral over r of the top function minus the bottom function. So that's f of x, y minus g of x, y um, times dA. And if you're wondering why that is, it's you want to think of taking this rectangle or this region r and splitting it into a whole bunch of little rectangles. And then above each rectangle, you want to create a rectangular prism. Maybe it looks something like this. The height of that rectangular prism um, is given by the top function minus the bottom function. And then the area there is that delta A or dA, um, which is typically represented by delta X times delta Y. Um, so we add all of those up and we take the limit and we get this double integral representing the volume between this function and this function. Now, in order to use this to calculate volume, we need to identify the top function and the bottom function. And we need to um, find the region R in the xy plane. Um, so this is enough to get us here, um, but it's going to be helpful if we can remember what this looks like and what this looks like and what this really means. Um, Let's do this one first. If I was in pre-calculus, we hopefully would all know that this is just a circle um, centered at the origin with a radius of the square root of 16 or a radius of 4. So in the xy plane, it looks like this. But if we're in calc 3 and we're thinking of that surface, oops as living in three-dimensional space, the fact that there's no z in that equation tells me that this is a cylinder. z is free to be anything. And so we have something that looks like this. And in the xy plane, it, it's going to intersect in a circle that looks like that. Um, so this is a cylinder. That's one of the bounds of that volume that we're trying to find. Now, the first octant is very similar to the first quadrant. Um, in pre-calculus, you learned about quadrants. This is quadrant one, that's quadrant two, that's three, and that's four, if this is the y-axis and the x-axis. As soon as we add that z-axis, we don't have quadrants anymore. We have what are called octants. You're going to have four different uh, octants when z is positive. We could call this um, octant 1, 2, 3, and 4, corresponding to these guys right here. If z is negative, we'll have the octants that are below the xy plane. I've seen some textbook authors say, okay, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. We're going to start over here with 5, then that's 6, and then that's 7, and then that's 8. Um, I had, am not 
I'm pretty sure that there is no universal agreement about these labels though. The one thing that we all agree on is that when we're talking about the first octant, we're talking about that octant right here, that, that octant that we're always imagining viewing our solids from or often imagining viewing our solids from. Um, it's, it's the octant where X, Y, and Z are all positive. So when they say first octant, that means X, Y, and Z are non-negative, greater than or equal to zero. And so they're talking about a solid that is over here. Um, or in the XY plane, they're talking about the, the part of that cylinder that lies right here, where X and Y are both positive. So that's good. That's giving us our region R that we're going to integrate over in a little bit. Now, this last piece is going to help us identify that top function and the bottom function. So remember what this is, x is raised to the first power, y is raised to the first power, so is z. So this is just a plane. When x is zero, we are in the yz plane back here, and all you see is the, the line z equals y. So this is the plane that intersects the yz plane along the line z equals y. So when y equals 4, z is equal to 4, and it would look something like this back in the yz plane. And remember, it also goes through 0, 0, 0, because if x and y are 0, z is 0. Similarly, if y is 0, in the xz plane, I would see the line z equals x. Well, it's going to look a little different, but the principle is the same. z equals x is a line that looks like that. Um, you have to imagine that it's in the xz plane. OK, and then. Um, we're going to see the part of the plane that lies inside that cylinder um, and is in the first octant. So it's going to look almost like a triangular piece, but instead of having um, a line over here, we're going to see um, kind of a circular edge like this. Now, since we're in the first octant, more boundaries for our solid include um, the xz plane and the yz plane, and then just like the rest of this cylinder that's sort of lying over here. If we were looking at this from the side, all we would see is a cylindrical piece, but then if we look at it from the top, we're going to see that that sort of almost triangle um, that's being cut out uh, by that plane. Okay, so um, in order to set this up, we need to identify the top function and the bottom function. So z is going from this function to this function, that bottom function to that top function. Well, in our picture, um, z is starting in the xy plane, so z is starting at zero. So the bottom function is zero, and z is going up to this other plane, z equals x plus y. Um, so that's our f of xy and our g of xy. So that's our top function minus our bottom function. And then we'll just integrate over the region R, where R is the projection onto the xy plane of that solid. And we've already drawn it right here because we know we're inside this cylinder and in the first octant. So now we need to describe that region R. Now there are a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, there are actually lots of different ways that you can do it. Um, but if we're staying in rectangular coordinates, there are two ways. We can describe this region R by letting x go from a function to a function, and then letting y go from a constant to a constant, or by letting y go from a bottom function to a top function and letting x go from a constant to a constant. I think most of us are comfortable thinking this way, where y goes from a function to a function and x goes from a constant to a constant, so I'll set it up that way. But it would be very um, simple to set it up the other way as well. Now if I'm letting y go from a function to a function, I need to integrate with respect to y first 
Um, I want to let x go from a constant to a constant. For our region r, x goes from 0 to 4. We'll do the easy part first. And y goes from this bottom function to this top function. And the top function, well, the equation of that curve is given by 16 equals x squared plus y squared. But I want y as a function of x up here. So I need to solve this equation for y by subtracting x squared from both sides and taking the square root. y is positive here, so I have the positive square root. So y starts at 0, that's that bottom function, and it goes to this um, part of our, our circle, which is given by the square root of 16 minus x squared. So that's one way of describing r. x goes from the constant 0 to the constant 4, and y goes from um, the curve y equals 0 to the curve y equals the square root of 16 minus y squared or x squared, excuse me. That's one way of describing r. Now, the other way of describing r is to let x go from a function on the left to a function on the right and letting y go from a constant to a constant. So y goes from 0 to 4. We'll do the easy part first. And then I need x to go from a left function to a right function. On the left, we're on the y-axis. That's where x equals 0. On the right, we're on that circle again, and x is positive here, so it, in solving this equation for x, I need to take the positive square root, and I get something very similar to what I got for y. Um, x is equal to the positive square root of 16 minus y squared. So we can either evaluate this, or we can evaluate this. You see, because of symmetry, it's not going to simplify um, our calculation very much if we choose this one over this one. Is even the integrand is symmetric with respect to x and y, um, as we also see on that little volume that we're, uh, the image of the volume that we're trying to calculate. Um, so either one of these is fine. Um, I think I'll do this one, but you could do that one. You're going to get the same answer. So remember how this works. We integrate from the inside out. So we anti-differentiate this with respect to y. x is constant with respect to y. The antiderivative of a constant with respect to y is that constant times y. And with the y, we want to remember that there's an implied 1 there. We have to use the power rule. Add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. And then you evaluate from y equals this value to y equals that value from this function to this other function. So I have x times y, where y is the square root of 16 minus x squared, plus 1 half of y squared. Well, I'm squaring a square root, so that we'll get rid of the square root, and I'll have a 16 minus x squared there. That's evaluating at the upper limit. Evaluating at the lower limit, we just get 0. Um, so we're subtracting 0 from that, which doesn't do anything. We've got this now. Now this is a product. Um, we don't have a basic rule for that. But it turns out that if we let u equal this function, u substitution will work. Remember, we always ask ourselves, do I have a basic rule? If not, try u sub. Um, u, if u is 16 minus x squared du, is negative 2x dx, and I'm never really sure it's going to work until I do that, and I look at this and I say, okay, don't worry about the 2. Is there an x dx up there? Yes, there is. There's an x there and there's a dx over there. So that means I can evaluate this with a u sub, because everything here, every single part of this can be rewritten entirely in terms of u instead of x. So we'll have the integral of this square root of u, which is the same as the one-half power. x dx, well, that's actually negative one-half of du. And then we also need some new bounds. To find some new bounds, I just replace the bounds for x into this equation for u.
So when x equals 4, I get u equals 16 minus 4 squared, which is 0. And when x equals 0, I get u equals 16 minus 0 squared, which is 16. So that's that part. And then this over here is just a couple of basic rules. I'll distribute that 1 half. Let's do the easy part first. Well, the antiderivative of a constant with respect to x is that constant times x. Bring the negative 1 half down. Then we add 1 to the exponent and divide by the new exponent. Then we evaluate that from 0 to 4. Um, at 4, we have 8 times 4, which is 32, minus uh, 4 cubed, which is 64, divided by 2 times 3. So that's going to be 32 over 3. And then when we evaluate this at x equals 0, we get 0 minus 0. So it's just 0. Now over here, if you prefer, a lot of students do prefer, you can switch the 16 and the 0, and you can multiply that result by negative 1. That's a a uh, rule that we discuss in calculus one, just so that it's more familiar to us, then we anti-differentiate. So we bring the one half down, add one to the exponent, and divide by the new exponent, dividing by three halves, multiplying by two thirds. Evaluate from zero to 16. And so we have one third and then we have 16 to the 3 halves power. Remember, the 3 halves power is the square root cubed. That 2 in the denominator becomes a square root. That 3 means we're cubing it. And then if I evaluate this at u equals 0, I get 0. So I've got um, 4 cubed over 3. That's 64 over 3 plus 32. Let's get a common denominator. That's 3 times 32 over 3 minus 32 over 3. Um, so I'm going to have uh, 2 times 32 over 3. So that's 64 over 3 plus 64 over 3, which is 128 over 3. And this is volume. So this is units cubed, whatever units x, y, and z are measured in. And that's the volume of this guy right here. It's the solid that is bounded by this part of the cylinder. It's bounded by the xz plane, the yz plane, and the xy plane. And it's bounded above by that plane at z equals x plus y.